Okay. Thank you, thank you for being here. Tonight we're going to discuss the month of Yar, the sign of Taurus. Uh, first, first, let me give you a few information about uh, the constellation of uh, Taurus altogether and the, and the month of Yar. Uh, the month of Yar in Hebrew means light, the month of light. Light. What does it mean? What does it mean, the month of light? And we know that the planet of Venus rules over uh, the sign of Taurus. As I explained before, there are seven planets in, the, uh, in our galaxy. And uh, this, actually there are ten planets, but there are only seven planets that, that influence the twelfth sign of Zodiac. And each planet rules over two constellations, except moon and the sun. Moon uh, only controls the sign of uh, Cancer, and Sun controls the month of Leo. But the, uh, the, the, rest, the, the other five planets each rules two constellations. So planet Venus rules over Taurus and also Libra. Uh, Taurus is an Earth sign. You remember we had four different uh, signs. Earth sign, air sign, water sign, and air sign. So Taurus, uh, the external energy of Taurus is Earth, so it's considered to be an Earth sign. And but the internal energy of Taurus is what? Earth. I mean fire. Is fire. How do we know that that is fire? Do right you remember how we calculate that? Mm -hmm. Each season has three months. The first month of each season, it sits on the right column, a right column of the ten sephirot, which is a positive column, and it and it represents water. So Aries, the inner energy of Aries, is water. The second month of spring is Taurus. It sits on the left column. The left column is a is a negative column. Negative, not negative. Uh, that means bad, but it's on the left side, which is the receiving. And the energy of the left column is fire. So Taurus, inner energy is, is fire. And the third one, which is the Gemini, we're going to discuss it next week. This, they sit on the central column, and the central column is air. So the first month of each season, the internal energy is water. The second month is fire. And the third is air. air. There's going to be a question. There's going to be a quiz. I'm going to question on the quiz. Okay. Have a quiz? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's interesting is that Venus rules over Taurus, which is an earth sign, and rules over the Libra, which is an air sign. And um, planet Venus is one of the most beautiful planets in our galaxy. It's a beautiful planet. And uh, it's, a planet, it's a planet of love. Love and passion. Love and passion. Aries, the, what, what planet ruled Aries? Mars. And what was the color of Mars? Yeah. Red. So it, and it represents the planet of war, conflict, argument, arguments. But all of a sudden we go to Venus. Venus and Venus is the planet of love. It's a beautiful planet. And um, all the planets in our galaxy, they all uh, circle around the sun uh, counterclockwise, counter except Venus. Venus goes clockwise. Why? Why? Hopefully we get to that tonight. Too. Planet of Venus in Hebrew, it's called Noga. Noga, the name of the planet Venus in Hebrew is Noga, and Noga means Light. Light. So both the month of Er and the planet that rules Er, Taurus, means light. Why? Why? And we have to understand that Noga, even though it means light, there is another explanation for Noga. There are four different kind of negative energy that rules the physical world. 
We call them klipa. Klipa means shell, a negative shell <coughs> that surrounds the neshama, surrounds our body. It what makes our perception negative, or it makes our behavior negative, or our consciousness negative. There are four klipots, four negative shell. The lowest of all called klipa noga. Klipa noga. And, or the membrane of noga. And this klipa usually uh, represents itself in the foreskin of the baby born on the eighth day. On the eighth day when the baby is born, this consciousness, this negative consciousness, this klipa noga, shows itself in the foreskin of <coughs> the baby boy. And that's why we do Brit Mila on the eighth day to remove the foreskin, to remove the negativity that comes with the baby. And hopefully we get to understand what does it have to do with Mark of Tarot. So Venus is about love, is about light, so it seems that Taurus has a lot of good things. Has the power of Venus, which represents love, passion, and uh, it's a month of light, both from the uh, point of view of the constellation and point of view of the planet that it rules over this month. And altogether, the month of ER, the sign of Taurus, has a duality in it, a duality of the light force and uh, the, the dark side as well. We know that the tabernacle, the Mishkan, that the Israelites built when they were in the desert for that 40 years that we were in the desert, the, they built a Mishkan. The Mishkan was a place <coughs> that holds the tablets of the Moses in it, had the staff of Moses, had the menorah, the whole thing that they carried, the ark. And that tabernacle, the Mishkan, was built in the month of Taurus. Good thing, right? It seems like a very positive thing. But we also know that, if you remember, I talked about this giant rabbi, this Kabbalist, called Rabbi Akiva. And he had 24,000 students, Kabbalist students, giant, giant souls. And all these 24,000 students, except five, start dying during this month of Taurus. Until the Lagromer, which is the 30 day of the Omer, and that plague stopped. But we see, even though it's the month of light, it's a month of positivity, it's a month of love, all of a sudden there is this huge darkness that happened during this month. It seems to be a duality. And also, in the fifth day of the month of Yar, the land of Israel, the country of Israel came about. So, and other positive things happened in the month of Yar. Uh, so what is this duality? If this month is full of light, full of love, why these negativities are occurring at this month too? We know that there is a period of, call it the Omer, which is from the first day of the month of, uh, first day of Passover until the sixth day of Sivan, we call it the Omer. And during these 49 days, we don't usually start anything new. There is no wedding. Usually after the lack of Omer, 33rd day, they do it. But altogether, this period of negativity falls into the month of Iyar. So we see this duality exists very clearly. Somehow there is extreme positivity of light, and then there is this negativity of chaos, of uh, this, the death of these 24,000 giants, and the, the, the month of the, the period of Omer. OK. Now we go, we go through the characteristic of the people who are born in this month. There are a lot of good things, there are a lot of positive things about the people who are born in this month. And I personally love the Tauruses. I love them. I have them all over me. Closest friends. I have a brother. I have a sister. So I am surrounded by Tauruses and I love them. I love them. They don't love me, but I love them. 
Tauruses, they're usually are quiet people. They are quiet people. They sit at the corner. They're very gentle. They're very, very nice. They're very, very easy people to deal with, to be friend with. They're lovely people. Very quiet. Very gentle. And they're very easy to recognize a Taurus. Taurus usually is very... Um, their proportion is very uh, stable. They're very well proportioned. Uh, they have huge shoulders, usually, and they have small ears. <laughs> they walk very strongly. A Taurus walks. When a Taurus walk, you could distinguish a walk of a Taurus versus any other sign. They're very strong built. They're physically very, very strong. Externally, they're very, very strong. And, uh, and one thing I need to share with you at the get-go is that Tauruses usually, they suffer. They suffer in their life. They have difficulties in their life. They go through a lot of turmoils in their life. But what is so amazing is that they don't really, they don't really go through the suffering as the rest of the signs go through. They, they usually justify what happens in their life. Um, they don't understand why they are suffering. They don't make a big deal of their suffering, their difficulties. They deal with it, and they justify it for themselves. You know, if a cancer goes through a chaos, the whole world knows about it. If a Scorpio goes <coughs> through a chaos, the whole world knows about it. They talk about it, they express it, they share it with everybody. They may complain about their life or the suffering that they go through. Tauruses, they go through this suffering, they go through these challenges, but they deal with it very calmly, very quietly, and they justify it. They don't really think that they are suffering in their life. Even when they're in a worse situation, it's always good. Even when they run into difficult things, they still think it's OK. It's good. Is that good or bad? Is that good? It's good. Yeah. Yes? No? OK, we'll get to it. Uh, It is so, it's so cute. Uh, Tauruses, they love themselves. They are in love with themselves. Tauruses love themselves. They take care of themselves. Usually a Taurus could sit in front of the mirror and love their own look. They, 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 they love it. And uh, they usually dress up very nicely. They dress up very, their dress is always clean. Their suit is always clean. A Taurus comes with an iron shirt. There is, not, there is not a spot on their shirt. They like to be perfect as far as clothing concerned. Their, sh their shoes are always sh has shine all over it. Uh, uh, and the, f the clothing that they wear is usually very comfortable. Taurus doesn't wear something that is too tight. They, they, their clothes needs to be a, a fine, a nice fabric comfortable fabric, very easy. They love comfortability in their clothes. But again, it's nice, it's clean, it's iron, it's perfect. Um, <laughs> another good positive attribute of the Taurus is that they are very, very loyal. Loyal friends, loyal people. Their loyalty, their their loyalty. loyalty is beyond, beyond logic, beyond logic. 
I'll give you an example. You may hurt the Taurus, you may break their heart, but they forgive you. After a while, no grudges. They let go. Because their nature is good, because they are good people, because there is no negativity in Tauruses, they don't see negativity in other people too. They don't think there are evil people in the world. They don't see the darkness in other people. They forgive. They let go. Um, they are very loyal to their friends. Good friends or bad friends. They're even there for their bad friends. Because they don't believe the bad friends are bad. They justify everything. They seem to have an amazing understanding for everything that happens in this world. To their friends, to their family, to everything that happens, they always justify the situation, justifies their people's behavior. Um, you know, Tauruses are the least people who get traffic tickets. They follow orders, they drive safely, they obey laws, they're not uh, rebels. Aquariuses are rebels. Can, you know, Scorpios could be rebels. But Tauruses, if they're supposed to drive 65 miles, that's what they drive. They don't over speed, they obey law, they park properly, uh, they obey orders, they follow orders. And you know everything that I'm telling you, and it may sound like a conventional astrology, but it's not. We're going to go through the reason behind everything that we discuss tonight. The reason for them of trusting people. The reason for them that they obey law. The reason that they want to be comfortable. It all has a reason, and it has to do with their tikkun, with correction. So even though it may seem that this is a more of a conventional astrology, it's not, and you, and, and, and you see that. Uh, if a Taurus gets upset or sad, they need to be on their own. They see that the corner, they don't want to be bothered, leave them alone. They need to have their own place at home. They sit, they want to be by themselves, and, uh, and they need to stay in that realm for a while, and they come out of it themselves. They don't usually get angry for over small things. Tauruses are really usually calm. They don't, they, don't, they don't react harshly to things that happen. They're very, very calm people. They don't get angry. But if they do get angry, they really, really get angry. So if they get angry, run away from them. Don't stay around. <laughs> like I said, they're not mean, they're not negative, they're not resentful, they don't look for revenge. Uh, they get over things quickly. It's very difficult to make the Taurus upset. They don't get upset. Uh, and it's very easy to take them back, very easy to take them back. You give love to a Taurus, they come back to you, no matter what you've done to them. Um, now they have a tendency to be lazy. They have a tendency to be lazy, be laid back. They like to sit at a corner. You know, one of the things that Taurus says is always, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Let me have my own corner. They look for convenience. Taurus loves his comfort zone. Taurus needs his convenience. They like comfortability. They love their home. They love their home. No matter how that home is, big, small, fancy, not fancy, one little studio, they're happy, they call it home, they love it. They may stay in that studio for 40 years. They have a little apartment and they could move they could get a bigger place, but no, they'd rather to stay. Taurus doesn't like to move. Their home is their castle, no matter what kind of a home it is. They usually have a very, very comfortable furniture, 
very passive colors, very comfortable setting, and they love it. And if they don't have a home, they always dream of having a home. Home means a lot to a Taurus. Comfortability, convenience is the name of a game for Taurus. Uh, they laugh over simple things. Their sense of humor is very, very unique. Taurus says they love to laugh and they love simple things. A Taurus can laugh over somebody slip over a banana uh, things. You know, they, they laugh at little things. And all the Tauruses in my life, they all have sense of humor in a way. They love to hear jokes, they love to tell you jokes, they love happy things, they love life. They love life. They cherish life. Um, they love a good food. They love a good food. Usually food for a Taurus is different from <coughs> the rest of the signs. When a Taurus eats, they care about what they eat. The food has to be nice, has to have good odor, has to have a good taste, has to have good ingredient. If a Taurus cooks for you, you're lucky. They do it with so much passion and so much love. They inject so much love in that food. The food is great. The food is great. And they're, they're very good with creating new things. You know, they cook for you different things, different food, everything that is nicely done. Um, food is a big thing. They love to eat. Not that they are big eaters, but they care about what they eat. Taurus is an earth sign. You know, I hope by the end of these classes we understand when we say somebody is an earth sign versus a fire sign or an air sign and a water sign, you immediately, you could immediately distinguish the difference. When a, when a sign is earth, what does, it, what does it tell you? That they care about the things that comes from earth. Home, saving, comfortability. Plants, river, water, everything that comes with earth, it matters to the <coughs> earth sign. Taurus loves to have his own garden. They have to have flowers at home all the time. They appreciate beauty and love that, the, that, that earth brings. They love fruit trees. They love fruits. They love flowers. They appreciate flowers. They appreciate birds and fishes and things that they are earthy. They connect to it. I see the smile on <laughs> my um, Don't ask him to move. Don't ask a Taurus to move. Don't rush a Taurus. Taurus needs his time. Taurus needs to know what he's going to do tomorrow, next week, or next month. You cannot tell Taurus, let's go to San Francisco tonight. No. A Taurus needs to know in advance, has to get his ticket, has to get his the hotel that he likes, has to get his place, you know. He has to pack his suits properly. You cannot rush a Taurus. Taurus needs time to make up his mind, to make a decision. They're not in rush. By no means they're in rush. They take their time. They take their time in everything that they do, in every decision that they make. They don't rush. They're not, they're not in hurry. Um, I told you that all the secrets of the astrology that we learn comes either from the book of Zohar, the book of Kabbalah by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, or the book of Abraham Avinu, the book of Sefer Yitzirah, the book of Formation. Abraham Avinu, in his books, in the book of Formation, explains that God gave all the love and the passion of this world to Tauruses, to Venus and to Tauruses. How lucky are you guys, huh? But why? Why? Love and passion is rooted in, in, in Tauruses. 
and it has to do with food, it has to do with sex, it has to do with love. Everything that has love and passion in it, it runs very, very deeply into Taurus's DNA and consciousness. <clears throat> Uh, they believe in themselves, they believe in their own consciousness, they believe in their order of their consciousness. They don't take orders from people, they don't like to be ordered from other people. They have their own orders of thinking. And uh, it's very difficult, very, very difficult for other people to change Taurus's mind. Once their mind is set, that's what it is. That's what it is. They're very difficult to change. Uh, I explained to you guys that each, each sign, each, each month, has its own vulnerability when it comes to physical being. When we talked about irises, what do we say about irises? That they usually have a scar on their face or their forehead or their face because they always they go to the wall with their head. Their vulnerability is headache, they get a headache, they get, God forbid, migraine, or things that has to do with head. When it comes to Tauruses, the problem is usually bones, legs, backache, spine, body ache. That's a problem with Taurus. Why? Why? Uh, Taurus loves art, loves music, loves painting. Taurus loves a good music, not a so-so music. Taurus loves music. They love classical music. A friend of mine who's a Taurus, every time I go to his house, every time I go to his office, every time I sit in his car, is listening to classical, the most beautiful classical music ever. Mozart and Beethoven, good music, the Beatles, and they, 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 uh, you know, they don't need drugs to, to truly enjoy the music. It's within their room. They go to museum and they could stare at painting for hours. They appreciate the, the colors of the painting, the structures that the painter used. They truly appreciate art, music, movies, movies. When a, when a Taurus watches a movie, it's different from when a Scorpio watches a movie. You know, they, they, they see the beauty of the movie, new movie making. They see the details. They see how the director talked, how the director directed the movie. They see the little things. They see all artistic value of the way they made a movie or they made music. Music and art is part of their life. A Taurus has to have some form of art in their life. I do not know a Taurus who's not into art somehow. They're either artists, musicians, painters, something that has to do with, with art. There are architectures, there are uh, everything that has to do with art. Tauruses are not built to do physical things. Taurus doesn't become a plumber. You know, Tauruses, they do not do physical things. They love to do things that has to do with art, something that rejuvenates their artistic value. We have an artist here who's a Taurus. Um, they're, not, they're not a judgmental people. They do not judge people quickly. They, uh, to them, everybody's okay, everything is okay, you know? They don't see negativity in people. They don't judge people. Everybody is nice. Everybody is good. Even if they're not nice today, tomorrow they will be nice. You know, they give people a chance. They're good people. I love Tauruses. <laughs> they don't judge me. Um, they're very kind. They're very soft. They're, they don't react to things. Um, they're not reactive people. They don't become hysterical. You know. Everything that in life, it's okay. It's part of reality. It happens. You know, when a Taurus, when something really drastic happens to the to the whole to the rest of the world, for Taurus, 
okay, it happens, you know. Earthquake is part of the nature. Um, storm, okay, so what this storm? I love rain. Uh, for Taurus, nothing is hysterical. They don't become too hysterical with, with things of the, of the earth nature. Um, they're very, very patient. They are so patient. Uh, patient with everything, patient with job, patient with making decisions, patient of getting ready. Taurus needs times to get ready. You cannot rush a Taurus to get ready. You cannot tell Taurus, let's go get ready. Are you kidding me? No. Taurus needs time to get ready. Um, uh, they usually have, they, they choose things in their life that requires patience. They don't rush things. Uh, they are very, very pleasant to spend time with. I love to go to travel with the, with the Taurus. I love to go to see, see a movie with the Taurus. I love to go to a concert with the Taurus. They're so lovely. They're so nice. They're so comfortable. They enjoy things. They appreciate things. Go to a restaurant, you enjoy going to a restaurant with a Taurus. They enjoy everything that has to do with love and art and passion. So, what is the tikkun of Taurus? It seems like they are perfect, right? Everything seems to be so nice and good and soft. Where is the ego of Taurus? We said that every sign has an ego. Right? Every sign has a correction. What is the correction of Taurus now? What is their tikkun? What's wrong? What is wrong? And one thing else I need to add. Of all the earth signs, you know we have three earth signs. Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo. Of all these three signs, spirituality usually comes very difficult to an earth sign. For an air sign, spirituality is part of their nature. But for an earth sign, spirituality doesn't come easily. Of all these three signs, Taurus is the most spiritual one. Why? How come? Um, the, root, the roots of all the problems with Taurus, their tikkun, the things they need to correct, comes from the planet of Venus, planet of Noga. We said that the planet of Noga means the planet of light. Light is the month of light, the month of Ziv, month of light. We said, if you remember, and I recommend this again, for those who haven't participated in the very first class of astrology, when we talked about the construction of all these 12 signs and the difference between each sign and the difference, spiritual difference between spring and summer, fall and winter, you need to either get a CD of the class or watch it online or watch it on our website or watch it on Facebook. It's very, very important for you to totally understand the spiritual aspect of astrology. If you remember, we said the first three months, the spring, has to do with which one of the letters of the UK of K. You remember? We said that the whole force behind all the 12 signs is the name of God, is the creator, which is the full letter of Yud, He, Vav, He. The first three months, spring, are represented, influenced by the letter Yud. And Yud represents what? Chokhmah. Represents Keter and Chokhmah. What is Keter and Chokhmah? The light, wisdom, clarity, what comes to your mind first. We said the four letters of Yud, Hey, Bab, Hey. The Yud is the potential. Hey 
is the manifestation of potential. Vav is the process, and the He is the manifestation. I gave an example in the very first class, and I'm going to repeat it because it's very important. An idea comes to your head, right? An idea of traveling comes to your head. It's just an idea. It's just an idea. Then, you know, you feel like, oh, I need to travel. I'm tired. I, I, I want to take a vacation. An idea comes to your head. That idea is the youth. It's potential. You haven't gone to vacation yet. You haven't planned anything yet. But just the idea that comes to your mind is the potential, or we call it the yud, the chokhmah, the keter and chokhmah. It's just an idea. When you develop that idea and you say, you know what, I'm going to go to New York. I want to travel. I want to go to New York. Now that idea becomes more revealed, becomes more from the pot, acts, becomes, becomes a manifestation of a potential. It hasn't become totally manifested. You only decided to go to New York. So the hey is the manifestation of the thought. When you decide to go to New York, you're in the frame of hey. When you go buy a ticket, when you pack your bag, when you get ready, when you travel on the airplane, all that <coughs> process that you get to New York is the vav, is the process. The last hey of the yud hey vav hey is when? When you're sitting in Manhattan and you're having an espresso. You get it? So the idea, the first idea, it's only potential. It's just an idea. And the yud, which represents that potential, which represents the light, rules over the first three months. That's why Aries, they all have great ideas. They have great minds. You remember we talked about Aries? They have great mind. Now, the first month, which is an Aries, creates, it, it was all the light. <coughs> it was all the light. We, talk, we talked about Aries, which they have great minds, great initiative ideas. They don't necessarily do it themselves, but they have great ideas. Aries tells you what is the best thing to do. Not necessarily he does it himself, but he has the greatest idea. So when it comes to Taurus, Taurus all of a sudden is an earth sign. It's on the negative side. Negative side represents receiving, drawing, the desire, or the vessel. Wants everything, but not necessarily is having it. It's only a form of potential of desire. When you think about going to New York, have you gone to New York? No. But the idea might totally stimulate your consciousness, and you might be very, very happy about going to New York. You haven't even gone to New York. You haven't even got the ticket or made the reservation. But the idea is where the youth is, is where the Taurus's consciousness is. When we say it's a month of Ziv, it's a month of light, it's the youth. Yud is everything. Yud is the light force. But it's only potential. So what does the Taurus see? Sees the light. Sees how beautiful this light is. It's influence under the, the planet of Venus, the Noga, the light, the love, the passion. Everything is fantastic. It's like looking at the sun and you see, wow, how great is the sun. But if I don't receive the physical benefit of the sun, am I, really, am I really using the sun? No. So what Taurus sees, Taurus sees the light. But it's only the potential level. Taurus feels the love, but it's only the potential. But they get overwhelmed with what they see, what they feel. Because they are under the influence of Noga, Venus, and it's all about light. Yud is all about light. Yud is all about the consciousness of light. They think they already got it. What all is what all the fuss about? Why do I have to do anything? My home is beautiful. I don't have a problem. Everything is wonderful. Everybody is wonderful because I haven't gone through the process of 
experiencing it, bringing it to my life. Taurus always stays behind their potential. They always lack to reach their potential. Why? Why they are, why we say, you know, they, they have a tendency to be lazy. Not because they don't want to work. Not because they're lazy, quote, quote, lazy. No. They see the light, they feel the light, and they think they have it all. Why should I bother myself? Why should I go work hard? Why do I need to push myself? Why do I need to move? I have it all. Don't you see Venus is so beautiful? Don't you see the love? Can't you feel the love? Look at this. Listen to this beautiful music. Isn't that wonderful? But have they earned it? Have they brought the light into their life? They feel it. It's potential. It's out there. But they haven't brought it into their life. That's why they sit in their comfort zone. Don't bother me. Leave me alone. Everybody is good. I don't have to deal with anything. We said, no, God. It's light, and then it's a kliparnoga. It's one of the biggest form of the darkness. The challenge we have in our life is every positive attribute that they have, it can, it can become <coughs> the worst enemy that we have. It's like the horn of a deer that it's so beautiful, but it might get stuck into the woods and might cause him to die. It's like somebody who's so beautiful, so handsome, and if he truly loves himself and all day looks into the mirror because how wonderful and beautiful he is, he gets stuck in his beauty, he gets stuck in his ego, and he may never reach the potential of why he became beautiful, why he has such a talent. Taurus has amazing talent. Taurus can be a painter, but he's only going to paint when he's comfortable. He's only going to do it if he loves it. He's not going to push himself. An architect, Taurus, only choose a client that he likes. Only design what he loves. If somebody comes to him, wants him to do something that requires a lot of work, he may not take it. He may not reach his potential because it requires work. For them, why should I work? Why should I push myself? I already see the light. I already have the love in my life. I'm happy where I am. Don't ask me to move. I have a little home. I have a little studio. Yes, if I work harder, if I push myself, I can get a better house. But I'm happy where I am. Don't push me. I don't like to change my furniture. I may have a furniture for 30 years, and I won't change it. What's wrong with this? It's comfortable. It's beautiful. Why should I change it? It's not about being content. We, knew it, we need to be content of the blessing that we have. Don't get me wrong. We need to ha be happy with what we have. But then again, if my potential is to be an awesome painter, an awesome musician, an awesome um, designer, then I need to reach to that point. We all have potential to be the best we can be. But we need to push ourselves out of our own comfort zone. The problem with Taurus is they love to stay in their comfort zone. Why should I push myself? Everything is good. I don't need to do anything. I'm beautiful. I'm amazing. I'm so talented. Everything is good. Nah, I don't have a problem. When we say they, they suffer, but they don't really, they justify it. And I ask, is that good? Is it really good? No, not necessarily. I have to deal with the situation in my life. I'm not supposed to suffer. We're here to be happy all the time. A Taurus reaches its potential, reaches its happiness, reaches its absolute fulfillment when they move themselves out of their comfort zone, when they push themselves to be better, to reach out for more, to gain more, to have more, 
to have ultimate love. Taurus sees the light, but he needs to bring the light into himself. He needs to create the light in, in his life. Not to be happy with the illusion of the light. You all heard that the light blinds you, right? Blinds your vision. The light blinds your vision. That's what happened to Tauruses. It's a month of Ziv. It's a month of light. And that brightness of the light blinds them from the reality of life, from the challenges that they need to handle, to go through difficulties, to welcome the challenges, to bring it on, to move forward, to push themselves forward, to reach higher from where they are. We said that the 24,000 of students of Rabbi Akiva, they all died during this month. Why? What was wrong? And it says in Talmud, it says in the Zohar, that these 24,000 students, they didn't respect each other. What does that mean? That means each student thought, what I know is the greatest thing that I need to know, and that's it. I don't respect anybody else. I don't need to learn anything else. I already know. I already know. Don't push me out of my comfort zone. What I know is what it is. And that, that's the problem. We need to reach out more. We need to have understanding for everything. We need to be open for ideas. We said Taurus is so stubborn in their own ideas, in their own way of thinking. And that could come to hurt them, to hunt them, to keep them, not to reach their potential. If you love a Taurus, 